With Weblec, you get direct access to top experts in equine medicine and surgery. You can see on ultrasound with this more classic sort of case, I suppose classic is not the right word, but one where you can't be confident of a diagnosis, you can see this enlarged and hypoechoic proximal suspension ligament compared to the contralateral normal leg in this hind limb. So this enlargement and hypoechogenicity is what we're, uh, what we're looking for. Now to go on to the, the real subject of this uh, uh, lecture is to talk about treatment choices or management of the condition. I, I have this sort of overall view in my mind when presented with a case where I'm confident we have abnormalities involving the proximal suspensory ligament rather than the uh, 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 with this procedure up to many, many months after surgery. However, only in a couple of courses, so I think the risk is low. Now, the interesting uh, thing is that the observation from Sue Dyson and Rachel Murray in their publication only from last year that looked at 155 horses that have undergone this procedure, uh, that they were low, they were uh, considered the poor conformational abnormalities uh, that we've described associated with some of these cases to be a contraindication for this procedure. Now, they quote a prognosis for the animals with proximal suspensory desmitis with normal conformation of 78%, which is very good. They make the conclusion that uh, conformational abnormalities are not appropriately treated with significant support for the fetal joint. So if we run that just briefly here, this is actually a horse with an SDST rupture, so it's not a suspensory injury. But you can see the overextension of the fetal joint um, when this horse was first admitted. This is not one of my bandages. In contrast, this is the video um, after placing the boot about 30 minutes later, and you can see how the pet of the might be So I actually think that uh, this boot has a 